And I would like to now turn the presentation over to our Vice President, Mark Valley, a graduate of West Point, actor, reenactor, and former Army engineer. Thank you. Thanks, Barb, Mayor Nelson, Council Members, Mr. Pinkerton. It's, uh, um, it's an honor to be able to talk to you, you about the fort and how we're, how we're looking right now. I went to, um, I went to Canada yesterday and I uh, stopped at the customs booth, as you're supposed to do, and um, uh, he asked me for my identification, and um, then he asked me where I'm coming from and where I was going. And uh, yeah, usually I give a little bit too much information. I'm from California, visiting my mother, I'm coming back, you know, <laughs> we're going to get into that tonight. But I sort of feel like this meeting tonight is really just sort of a check-in at customs. We're just going to tell you who we are, um, let you know where we're coming from and, and where we're going. And um, Barb has explained to you, for the most part, who we are. Uh, I just want to recognize, recognize Barb. She's been the spearhead of this association since 1999. Um, the $10 million remediation and 8,000 tons of, of contaminated soil that was taken off of the Ford property is, um, is to me, still, is still an incredible accomplishment. And um, we're really lucky to have her, and it's, it's, uh, it's great to be able to help out this organization. Um, what I want to go over now is just basically the, the um, the Office of uh, Parks, Recreation, and Historical Preservation grant that we have. Um, and this is our focus right now. And this is what I would like to explain to, to everyone here right now. Um, when I go through this, I will go through this uh, uh, explanation and then I'll open it for questions for questions afterwards. Um, good chance I don't have an answer, but I've, like we said, we have some, uh, some, have some um, experts back there. They also asked me at Customs if I have any weapons. I don't have any weapons. It's probably not important to this. Mike Forrest probably has a Leatherman. <laughs> That's all we got. So I'd like to get started. The project goals, we're talking, we would like to uh, jumpstart the redevelopment of our property in Lighthouse Point for the enjoyment of the community, uh, complement the city's waterfront VOA revitalization efforts. Um, it's an enhancement of the St. Lawrence Valley's tourism infrastructure and also Augensburg, um, and, um, and prime the pump for subsequent project phases. And this project, essentially, we're going to be um, building a trail through the Lighthouse Point property that will be free of charge and uh, members of the community will be able to enjoy. Um, by prime the pump, um, we're not really referring so much to prime the pump as, as far as funding goes, but um, our outlook at this point is to develop and sustain a, a productive alliance with the city. You know, we have shared alliances, shared shared objectives, and shared uh, benefits. And um, I don't know. I sort of thought maybe, you know, the city and the Ford could become friends with benefits. We don't have to be in love with each other, but when we do come together, some things are accomplished. So we move right along. Um, the objectives that we have are to build a new interpretive trail in the Lighthouse Point, providing. Waterfront trail open to the general public and visitors. Linkage with the city's Maple City Trail. Future trails to be developed in the future. We're going to show you a, um, a conceptual plan, a preliminary plan of what it's going to look like in a moment. And also we're going to provide <coughs> residents and visitors with interpretive signage on Ogdensburg's unique history. As Barb's explained, there's, a, there's like a dual mission of the Fort and the Association is also to, to educate and to promote the valuable history of, of this region and Ogdensburg especially. Anticipated visitor benefits. We're looking at a one-mile accessible loop trail to be constructed from the arterial. There'll be no fee for the use of these facilities. A waterfront picnicking facilities, benches, bicycle racks, a small parking area to be developed. We'd also be interested in hearing um, any input that, that the council has for this for this location as well. Interpretive signage on the civilian and maritime history of the city, natural history of the St. Lawrence and Oswegatchie rivers and the reuse of an industrial brownfield will be installed. I don't know, I was thinking maybe we could put in a bar and grill, outdoor seating, maybe call it Brownfields Bar and Grill, just a thought. <laughs> That'd be cool. Just a thought, thank you for your support. There'd be a competition with some of that. Yeah, we would be, we, we'd work it out, there's room for another one. A functional linkage with the city's Maple City Trail will be possible, enhancing the quality of life for area residents, great place to live, it's a great place to visit. I'm just visiting, but, um, it feels like I live here now. Um, the Abbey's Trail conceptual plan. Um, this is the conceptual plan, obviously, that we have. Um, if I can get up there and point to you, roughly where the trail is. 
uh, the proposed trail running along sort of the interior, then along the waterfront, through here, back through the woods, down along Glass Beach, and then, and then back. Um, that's kind of what we're looking at. Uh, this also includes, um, you know, the possible locations of our, of our future. Um, you know, I was wondering how long it was going to take me to get in front of the camera, but apparently. <laughs> um, it's also going to include an area right here where we would put our, where, we, where the Fort Lies of Presentation the, um, will be built. The actual location is up here on Mr. Duffy's property, which is somewhat contaminated right now. Mm -hmm. um, this is an area right now that we're sort of holding off for um, a possible interpretive center. It looks like a softball field, but um, I don't think we'd be able to put together a very good softball team on the fort. Uh, no. No. But anyway, this is what we're looking at right here. I'm sure you might have some questions about that, but like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's conceptual. Okay. Um, project budget. This gets interesting. Um, like I said, this is also conceptual. We, we put this together with some kind of rough estimates. I mean, Mike or Fred will be able to answer some questions on this. The site prep work, uh, 97,000 trail paving and hardscapes, 187,000 amenities, picnic tables, 26 utilities, landscaping, design, permitting, administration, 37,600. And a total of 470,000. For anybody who's not aware with uh, the state matching grants, um, I'm probably the only one who wasn't aware. But it's uh, it's more or less a situation where the where the state will will ask you to buy a $4,000 car, show it to them, and they give you $3,000 back. And um, and we will be responsible for 120,000 of that. Now, if we look at our sources of financing right now, um, we have some time. Uh, but the overall grant is for three hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars, six hundred and fifty, which which is three quarters of the overall project. Um, there's a River Valley Redevelopment Grant that we've applied for, um, for La Presentation Equity, and a total of four hundred seventy thousand. We're we're planning on applying to grants from regional foundations that'll be sought to reduce the in equity investment required. Um, these are some of our project phases we're looking at. Phase one, every a lot, a lot of the a lot of the during a lot of the real meat of the project is going to be taking place in 2015. But um, getting things together, we're going to start as soon as June of this year. And this is uh, this is a, probably a good case scenario. A contract with Office and Parks, the six of 2014 uh, procurement for professional architectural engineering services, programming, city planning review, construction, document completion, and term construction. Uh, competitive bidding in March of 2015, final permitting, award of contract uh, in April, construction after Founders Day in July, interpretive panel design and commissioning on um, September 2015, project completion, um, good fortune willing, in November of 2015. And how can the city help? Um, well, we're looking at uh, um, hoping to advance the city advance the project through the city's permitting process. Um, we, we, we've, we've had discussions, we've met with the city, the city manager's office. Um, we're, hoping, we're hoping we can keep an open relationship there and, uh, and work together. And um, yeah, take a bow and help us celebrate this major accomplishment. Uh, we don't have to take a bow right now. Uh, I would just like to add that um, though this is an accomplishment and it is a great deal of work that the Ford Association has done to get us to this point where we can actually start building and developing this land. Um, a lot of the, uh, you know, a lot of the donations have come from directly from this community and um, um, a lot of what's, what's gotten us here is from this region, from this community and we have a responsibility to these donors to, um, to get to work as soon as possible and that's what we'd like to do. So, Pretty much that's it. I'd like to open this up for questions. If anyone has anything. <coughs> Any questions of, of Mark or Barb or Fred or Mike or the rest We're of the contingent that's here? <coughs> no, it's very, very thorough and informative uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much.